The Unconventional Therapist's Guide to Nothing. Hey everyone, we are The Unconventional Therapists, and this is your guide to nothing, where each and every week we take a topic, theme, or thing, overanalyze it, and make it all make sense in the scheme of life, living, and mental health. My name is Dave. I am joined here with my good friend, Greg Oh, Sharpentier. I figured to say, top of the morning. See, okay, so then this that's what I'll do. I'll give you a few hints here, even though you know the topic, but you could pretend okay. almost like- All right, uh, give I'm, me my first hint. All right, first hint. I love gold. Oh, we're doing leprechauns. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, you nailed it. Wow, good wow. job. Wow, <laughs> yes. Boom, Sherlock, lock, boom was the, next, was the next hint. I don't know. I would not have is. gotten that reference. Really? Oh, well- What is I'll, that? That is Shamrocks and Shenanigans, uh, House of Pain song. Oh, you look <laughs> like you would listen to House of Pain. <laughs> Were you in House of Pain? I may have been. I, I, <laughs> tried, I, I tried out for House of Pain. There was one guy in the corner, always in the corner, with a golf hat on. Yep, that's me. <laughs> and an old-timey mustache. Yep, yeah. Boom, shalak, lock, boom. Uh, that's, that's my con- contribution to it. So, of course, Dave, keeping with the tradition of paying homage to every passing holiday. <laughs> we, we are not going to let St. Patrick's Day slip by. This is going to be good. And you know what? When, I, when <laughs> like, we discussed this, I was like, oh, man, this is going to have a lot. Mm. And I was wrong. Well, you were wrong, but that's okay. Because our job is to make a lot out of a little. And there's tons of shamrocks and shenanigans and shillelaghs and shillings. And <laughs> This is a filled episode of just, it is a fun episode, I guess we could say. And speaking of shillelaghs, do you know what that is? Do you know yes, what a shillelagh is? I is a shillelagh like a, it's like an Irish banjo? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I you wanted it to be so hard. You know what they call an Irish banjo? Oh, a, ban- a, a banjo. Oh. <laughs> an so, Irish no. ukulele is a shillelagh. Nope, nope. That's just now you're just rhyming and you should stop guessing because a shillelagh is an Irish fighting stick. So, you know, when you're a kid and you're like walking in the woods and you find a stick. Wait, wait, wait. No. Um, so is this like, all right, this, the Boston Celtics uh, mascot is Lucky the Leprechaun. And if you think about their logo, he holds a shillelagh. Yeah, he probably should be holding a basketball. He has a basketball on one finger, and then his other hand, he's balanced on what I always thought was a cane, but it's a shillelagh. It's definitely a shillelagh then. Yeah. Oh my God, it's 100% a shillelagh. See? Now we know. A thousand. One thousand percent. So the the Boston Celtics guy's name is Lucky the Leprechaun? Yeah. Do you know the guy from Lucky Charms is named Lucky? Um, isn't every leprechaun nicknamed <laughs> Lucky? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Oh, but, Greg, that connection that just gave me the shivers. <laughs> yeah. But in this case, it's called the Shamrock Shakes. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so you know, this is a uh, we're trying our best. <laughs> <laughs> we suck. This is a long opening. <laughs> has it, has it, that's has all it, we got is the opening. There's literally nothing to this. Has it been thirty minutes? <laughs> okay. All right. Let's let's get into this thing. So leprechauns, what are they? Um, well, are they leprechauns or are they leucurpans? Okay, well, you tell me. <laughs> so that was the orig- what the word leprechaun derives from, right? Which translates to a small body. Yeah, you know what? I have a little beef with that, to be honest. Because, because you used to be nicknamed leucurpan? <laughs> no, I'm still le- leprechaun or whatever you want to say. I, I think that... When it's I, not Lupercon. <laughs> whatever, okay? It's well, probably a person. My problem with the idea of them being called small body, because in, ter- in terms of fairies, they're always described as being like two to three feet. Mm-hmm. And I think that's pretty big, bigger than I would have thought for a leprechaun. When I was a kid and I was picturing leprechauns running around on St. Patrick's Day, I was picturing inches, like a little tiny really? little thing. Yeah, that's what I always, always, always pictured. And then maybe, you know, in pop culture, where where did, where did, what was your formulated first view of a leprechaun? Like, where did you get it from? 
maybe the guy in the cereal box and he's just so tiny. He wasn't, was like, he wasn't that small though. Think about it. He's running away with his box of cereal, yep. which is like, you know, it's pretty big in his hands, but mm-hmm. it's still big enough. For, like he's big enough to hold it. And little kids are running after him and he's not that much smaller than them. No, but I guess what I'm, what I'm saying is what make this guy's three feet tall. That's not very magical. You're confusing leprechauns with the Keebler elves. Or, well, that's and you just, love cookies. So that's just your opinion. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that's what I'm doing. I just think uh, they were, I thought they were smaller. So anyways, they're, they're, they're a, a fairy folk. We have to, we have to distinguish that. And they're known for being solitary loners. They're always kind of alone. Yeah. And they're usually wearing a green coat and a hat and buckles. buckles. Yeah. Which kind of like a, a little tiny Puritan. It's got the stockings and everything. It kind of yeah. looks, that's exactly what they look like. Um, so the, so again, they're described as being three feet high, and that's just a large fairy, if you ask me. When you think of a fairy, small, right? Right. No one is asking you. Okay. <laughs> Literally no one I've in said, Ireland, I have a problem. In, in all of the United States, anywhere, is asking you. Like my opinion on how tall they should be? <laughs> or if they're fairy. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right. Well, my fault. <laughs> well, this, they they started in the oceans. Did you know this? Yes, they are. They, they were water dwellers. Yeah, water dwellers, and they would d- try to drag you into the ocean. But if you caught them, they would offer you three wishes for their release. Yep. Next incarnation of them is they're kind of red and dirty, and they're stealing babies they're actually working for working for and with changelings to steal the babies and give them to the fairy people that's kind of interesting right right so the the earliest known reference um is actually which this shocked me it's actually appears in a medieval tale the adventures of fergus uh i don't even want to try to pronounce this un of letty Fergus MacLetty, I don't know how to say it. He's a king of Ulcer, and he falls asleep on a beach and finds that he's being dragged into the sea by three Lucrepon. He's like, no, no. He just just gets up. (laughs) He literally just stands up, and then he captures the three leprechauns, and they grant him three wishes in exchange for their release. So that's where you get the the three wishes. Okay. Reference. All right. So this is all going to start coming together as far as the lore, the lore of it go, because the next incarnation is, is the one we've been talking about this whole time. When you think of the Celtics or lucky, either, either of the luckies, the lucky mm-hmm. family, um, they're shoemakers, they're cobblers. And they are, we, we associate them with the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And they always have one shilling there's something specific about that and they the the earlier incar- incarnations of leprechauns were very evil sort of mean stealing babies trying to drag people into the ocean but these leprechauns that we know now are sort of more mischievous than sure. evil and i think that's because they have all that gold comes from somewhere and what they what they do is they make shoes and all the fairies are always dancing around and they, they wear through their shoes quite a bit. So the shoe business is booming. Leprechauns have all the gold. Yeah. This is what I'm this is what I'm reading. So, so this is what we're dealing it, with. Yeah. And this this account, uh, or I believe the account that you're referring to is from 1888. So this is quite a while ago as well. And the reference that they make in there is that the leprechaun's not a cobbler but he's frequently mending his own shoes because he runs about so much that he wears them out with great frequency. Yeah, um, which... so that's kind of the twist that they put on it for, for that account. But along the same lines, it's all having to deal with cobbling and repairing Shoe. shoes. Very strange. They are always running. Yeah. Running around, scatting around. So, all right. They're a little bit, um, I guess everything sort of softens up as far as folklore goes. We well, saw that. You know, it's funny because like you you were saying how they're no longer evil and now they're more mischievous. And in this account, in one of uh, one part of it, they talk about the leprechauns 
being the son of an evil spirit and a de- degenerate fairy. So it's not wholly good, but it's not wholly evil as well. Oh, interesting. So it's kind of that middle ground, which is where you get that mischievousness. And I like that their their explanation about the all the wealth they have uh, is from William Butler Keats. Uh, Yeats, sorry. He claims that the, their wealth is from treasure crocs that they found from uh, buried of old in wa- old wartime that they uncovered and appropriated. So it's like this this wealth that wasn't theirs that they've um, t- you know taken on and now they're protecting it. All right, so I still say it's the shoe business got real hot with the fairies, <laughs> but I mean the tiniest shoe if, business. If, if that's what Eats says, so you are talking about their disposition and, and what they're like. So why were they so angry? Why were they say why were they so ornery? Some might say. Um, they started off as baby thieves. We know that. So they're, they are kind of cruel, but this is the kind of stuff they do. And this is going to bring you back to, I don't know, Faustian bargains. It's going to bring you back to the movie Wishmaster. But here's one account from a, a farmer in, um, rural Ireland. He caught a leprechaun and the leprechaun told him that he will tie a ribbon around the branch where the treasure is hidden under the tree if he just lets him go and he gave him his word and apparently for whatever reason they have to keep their word so when the all all the farmer had to do is go to his back to his house then come back out so he could you know hide this tie this ribbon and the farmer could come find it so what the leprechaun did was when he left he tied a ribbon around every single tree including the right one but what he did was he he did what he said he was going to do but it's also there's a loophole. Yeah. You know, it's always this thing where I'm going to do this thing for you and I'm going to grant this wish, but it's not going to be the wish you want. Why do we see this so often? Why, why does this keep happening? Yeah. So, I mean, that is kind of the angle that I'm, I'm getting out of this is it's almost this idea that there's no such thing as like things coming so easy. Right. I, yeah. That's kind of like where I think that the message around things like this, like leprechauns and like the wish master that you refer to that idea that like, yeah, you can get your wishes granted, but if you want to take the shortcut and take the easy way out, it's not all going to go as planned. Like you can't, you can't control that outcome the way you could, if you just went for whatever that, that goal was with hard work. Right. Or is this more for folklore coming from the top? People saying, you, you're, there's no easy way. Don't, spe- we don't waste your time looking for the easy way or the get rich quick sc- scheme or getting rich at all. Yeah. Just yeah. go to work, Hard do work. your job, yeah. and, and you're going to be all right. And that's what they need people to think. So they tell these oh, stories. And that's exactly what I mean. It's like that idea of don't try to think that you can cheat your way to the top or you can cheat your way around success to success. Yeah, like Robert Johnson and, and the stories, the Faust stories before that. Here's another, if we're if you're really kind of digging for psychological angles, which I, it seems like we are, I think what we have to think about is their mood changing significantly after, however they did it, like war money or shoe money, their, their mood and their disposition and the way they dress and the way they acted completely changed after they started having significant amounts of supernatural wealth. So mm. this kind of makes me think of our own, especially in this country, our obsession with wealth. And it brings me to the question, Dave, and maybe you can answer this for all of us. Is money the root of all evil? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. That doesn't leave much for debate. It's so, true. It, do, do you think so? You know, well, you know what it, this reminds me of, and I just had this vision in my head as we we're talking about leprechauns. We we're talking about their disposition changing. We're also talking about like it's all right. So their whole purpose in life is to protect this pot of gold, which they're constantly hiding at like a destination that's impossible to find. Yep, and it's a burden. And who else, what other character in like popular fantasy do we know that was burdened by a treasure that kind of like ruined his life and he's constantly protecting it? Are you talking about Gollum from Lord of the Rings? Is it Smeagol? It's both. 
Oh. It's both, yeah. You yeah, but no, that's a great point, actually. I didn't really thought about it like that. And so th- there's the money, be- the the gold, the pot of gold becomes so important to them that they're they're deceiving people constantly. They're n- and interestingly enough, they become these solitary yeah. creatures where they're always alone. And why are they always alone? Because all they care about is money. And that's what happens when all you care about is money. You become alone. That's not to say that I don't want money yeah. because I do. But I, it's it's interesting. So I, I almost think every time someone says money is the root of all evil, I always think to myself, is it money is the root of all evil or is it lack of money yeah. is the root of all evil? But isn't that sort of the same thing? Because when when people have money, they still make terrible choices. Right. Right. It, right. But if you not about, all the time, but it still is a potential for. But if you think about like a like a poverty stricken area and the maybe there's more crime there and maybe there's more crime there because people genuinely are trying to find a way to get ahead, find a way to feed their families, find a way like they're desperate. So maybe it, the lack of money is what creates evil. But I think the existence of money I, is what we're saying here. Lack of too much of that's maybe a huge yeah, part of uneven it. playing uh, mm-hmm. grounds is going to cause for uneasy feelings. And it's going to cause this, this idea of like, I got to make, ends meet i have to you know provide for my family and the other end you're going to be constantly worried about keeping your your wealth secure and obtaining more wealth so if i had to pick the most deadly of the deadly sins i wouldn't agree, have agreed with dante in um you know the the deepest pits of hell i would say the worst one is envy and i think money creates envy and envy is you know, you, you covet something someone else has and you'll try to get it at all. You'll bring them down so sure. to bring yourself up. And I, you know, actually recently, and this, this wasn't going to be part of this at all, but I remember hearing the story about this, the, the richest king to ever live in Africa, Mansa Musa. Have you ever heard that story? And he passed through some, some city and he gave each one of its residents in like a million dollars, the equivalent of, right? A certain amount of gold. And it completely destabled and crippled the entire economy and made it impossible for anyone to be in charge. It just destroyed civilization. And I, and I could never understand why. And I'm not like, do you have any ideas towards that? Like, so, like, for example, when um, Mayor Bloomberg was running for mayor in New York City, I remember reading this thing that he spent $600 million on his campaign. And I was like, wow, how many people are in New York? If you gave everyone a million dollars, they're going to vote for you. Why don't we just do that? If you're going to spend $600, why buy billboards when you could just give everyone a million dollars? Because there's something about creating the equal playing field that the people in power cannot have. It was just like when we talked about with Tulsa. If everyone was going to be on equal grounds, that means that the people in power are also on equal ground and they don't want that at all. Yeah. And yeah. They don't I need mean, them. If you're in a place of power and you have wealth, like it doesn't benefit you for other people to have an equal amount of wealth. If anything, it makes your overall value feel less valuable. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that that's, that's part of it. And yeah, just overall, you know, they people need you less too if they're if so i mean if you're running for some kind of political office if you know everybody was around the same amount of uh financial wealth as you they would need they their need for you would be less and they you'd be less desirable i guess mm, and the and rarity is value if yeah. there's if everyone has money it's not rare anymore then you don't have anything to control populations anymore like we're never going to have a middle class president impossible right? it's impossible I, I mean, I, we, as the way things are set up, structured right now, it's impossible. You couldn't do yeah. it. Um, okay, so let's move around, like out of this political debate and uh, let's start talking about creatures that... So, Greg, I just... I, before, before I do that, it, I want to talk about the leprechaun in its origin because you re- referenced it, but this is a really interesting point. The original depiction of leprechauns were wearing red and there's all these different variations of their outfit but they all involved red like this a form of a red coat whether it was a red plaid or just like a you know they each uh there was like different regions 
and each region had its own different depiction of what it was wearing, but it was all so much different than what it looked today. And over time, it evolved into green, which there's no real definite, like definitive reason that that happened because of this. It's not like Christmas, Santa Claus, we got the, you know, we had the first version of him in red from the, I'm trying to remember now because I should remember this. Before the Coca-Cola depiction, there was one version of him as red and that kind of started. Then the Coca-Cola one was like the definitive version of Santa. And then we just, we saw him look like that from there on. There's not any of that as far as we can see with leprechauns. The idea is probably the popularity of green in Ireland. And the Emerald Isle. The, the, Emerald the coast Isle. is green. Yeah, and the flag being green. What else is green? Money? Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> Back then, <laughs> probably not. Yeah, but you think of green rolling hills when you think of Ireland, right? Mm-hmm. And also, like, the popularity of St. Patrick's Day. And, you know, green is kind of synony- synonymous with that and now with leprechauns. So at some point in time, there was an evolution. But it's really interesting to think about it, a leprechaun, like that vision that we all have in our heads of a leprechaun being wearing all green and then like back before this depiction it was looked totally different it's it is interesting and i wonder when that when that change was made and why red as much yeah, as why red. green why red right yeah uh, it's it's interesting so what about moving on to creatures that are very much related to leprechauns just a few um honorable mentions here which some people categorize as leprechauns and the first one is a clarishon. And these little creatures are have all the characteristics of a leprechaun. Maybe they dress a little bit differently, but they're known for haunting breweries and wine cellars. And they're essentially leprechauns who are on a drinking spree, a constant, constantly drunk. That's that's like their whole thing. Mm-hmm. And they're probably they 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 still do pranks and they still are mischievous, but it's probably, you know a lot less thought out. Like they just text their ex leprechaun girlfriend or something <laughs> late at night. I don't, I don't know what they're doing, but another creature would be the fear deer. And these are the ones that were earlier incarnations of leprechauns. They were the ones dressed in red. They were the ones that would smoke pipes with bird poop in them. And they were the ones stealing babies and helping the changelings wreak havoc on human families. And they, they, they're also called rat boys and they had long skinny tails and, long snouts but everything else looked you know exactly like a leprechaun and the last one i'll mention are knockers or tommy knockers and these are mystical subterranean gnomes and they say that they're the most benevolent of all the leprechauns but they're known for extinguishing candles in mines and hiding tools in mines which i think is probably the most awful thing you could do to people in the mine. Like if you're in the mine, what's the worst thing you could do? Turn out the lights. Yeah. yeah. And then hide my flashlight. Yeah. I, so, so they sound pretty, pretty awful to me. But when I say Tommy knockers, I mean, of course I see you perk up a little bit. Like what, maybe you're thinking of the Stephen King classic movie. You mean classic book? Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Oh, they turned that movie into a book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, isn't that a made for TV movie? Tommy knockers. I don't know. I, I, all I know is I know of the movie and even, even now that I know what a Tommy knocker is, I have no idea what even to think that movie would be about because it's, I know it has nothing to do with gnomes. So is he just borrowing the name for me? Some kind of metaphor or something? I don't know. Does something happen in the dark? Who knows? Um, we probably should have, Learned a little bit more about that movie before I brought it up. But hey, Dave, book. you're the book. book. Book, you're the professional. Listen, I've read a couple Stephen Kings. I'm no, uh, I'm no slouch. Yeah. So, but no one's going around talking about the Tommy Knockers movie. They, everyone refers to the book. To say is is it well known? Is it a good? Steve, is it a top ten? I mean, it's it's definitely one of his tops. Really? Maybe I'll have to check this out. Hmm. Rather large. Large and in charge. They're large all book. rather large. I read the, it. It took me like half my life. Oh yeah, it's definitely the, the largest. That's a big one. So okay, let's talk pop culture, Dave. I'm gonna let you. Uh, well, you you did mention a couple already. You mentioned the the both luckies, 
the Celtics and the cereal with the charms. The guy from the Fighting Irish, right? The Notre Dame yeah. leprechaun. Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Did you see that as a child? No, I did not. And that was a good little Disney movie. It's about um, this guy captured Leprechaun King. It's just not that important. Currently but streaming on Disney Plus. The one I wanted to get your take on. Crowd sponsor of the podcast, Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crowd sponsor, yeah. Proud, Stephen King, proud sponsor of the podcast. Yes. Um, Warwick Davis starred in a little movie that I'm sure. I, Warwick Davis, now that when I was looking at this guy, I mean, he was in Willow, he was in Ewok. He was in Labyrinth. He's in Harry Potter. This guy is prolific. But what's the most, what, what are you thinking right now, Dave? The, the movie Leprechaun. Can you tell us something about that? I mean, I'm also a huge fan of Willow. That was one of my favorite movies as a kid. Growing up, um, the brownies. There were brownies or what were they called? The little Leprechaun-ish type guys. And they brought it back. I know that. Uh, so Will, work Day is very much still, still relevant in this world. Uh, but Leprechaun, the Leprechaun franchise, obviously he, he being the most famous of the ones to don the leprechaun attire are there um, more yes there oh. are more so he did the first four as well as the lep- two leprechaun in the hoods okay and then they did a leprechaun uh what was it was in it space or, that was part four okay then they did one that wasn't him and it was horrible and then they did one called Leprechaun Returns, and that was actually really good. And it had a different little person playing the Leprechaun, and he was delightful. And that was an excellent movie. And it had, uh, speaking of our our favorite film, Teen Wolf. Remember the remember the guy in the basketball team? He's in the first one too. The guy from the basketball team of Teen Wolf. He's always eating. eating oh, food. the Chubs. Chubs. He's yeah. in. You know, he's in. War, he was in the first Leprechaun. And he comes back in, in the more recent one. You know who else is in the first Leprechaun? Oh, Jennifer Aniston, of course. That's a big, that's a big get. Or yeah, I mean, not she, surprising. That you know how many big name actors got their start in horror films? No, how many? A lot. Brad <laughs> Pitt, uh, George Clooney. Wait, Brad Pitt? What what was his what was he starring in? Uh what was it called? Uh final exam or something like that. It had something to do with uh testing school reference. George Clooney was returned to horror high. Uh yeah, there's plenty more. I just can't think of them off the top I of my head. I thought the first his first appearance was on Roseanne and then straight to ER, but I can see I like mean, but I mean first film appearance. Ah uh, is what uh, I mean. Well, I, I, yeah, no, I, I think that you're you're probably right, especially when it comes to film and these things. So I I, I think that's a that movie the leprechaun was definitely in my consciousness that's when i that's when i finally realized oh leprechauns are taller than i thought or like this is a huge leprechaun you know i one of those things was robust yeah he was big so So, i mean he represents a little bit of what we talked about at the beginning some he was sort of evil he's a trickster he Mm -hmm. is rather funny he likes to play pranks he will like play along with people but often misguides them and it's all about protecting his gold. The pot of gold. Uh, that's gold. Not good. If you think he, if you think you're getting away with his gold, let me tell you. So, Dave, is it in in the case of the Leprechaun movies? Is he, you know, half good, half bad, or is he all bad? No, he's pretty bad. He is okay. Not a good dude. And is it? Is it? A, so I have. I may have seen this when it first came out but since then i haven't is this like a wishmaster type thing he does i mean something- i have leprechaun 2 on vhs right here for you to borrow after the- <laughs> you'd like yeah 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 your viewing pleasure i'll part let you know is, part two is my favorite really is did yeah. they lost jennifer aniston by then of course yeah. so part two is the only one that actually takes place i believe on saint patrick's day if i remember correctly what how do you kill a leprechaun same mm-hmm. way you kill anybody else I guess. Okay. I just didn't know if there, they was, have, there was like also some, yeah, I don't know. How like do folklore. So like, what does something hurt a leprechaun? Well, I know one, he turns into stone. Uh, there's probably, oh, I would love to know the lore behind that too. We don't have that. Well, speaking of, this is making me think of a movie I saw when I was little that really kind of scared, to, but scared Jesus, the hell out of me. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, Jesus. but Jesus, right. Rumble Silskin. Is, yep. uh, this, uh, that's a leprechaun-esque creature, right? Sure. 
do this. And uh, oh, he keeps tricking her. All right. Let's save that for another podcast. Okay. That's, I think that's its own story, isn't it? Uh, well, we thought, leprechauns was, some, we thought yeah. leprechauns was its own story, but we can look into it. OK, we'll look into it. Also, I thought this would be a great time to mention one of my favorite childhood cartoons um, who isn't a leprechaun, but very much in the family. David the Gnome. Yeah, not a leprechaun, though. Okay. I don't. Rhoda Fox. That's what the maybe I loved that's David. What... I loved David the Gnome. I know my mom's going to hear this and she's going to hear you mention David the Gnome and she's going to be like, You love David the Gnome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like, obviously, my name being Dave. Like, oh, you had the little cone hat and everything. I wish. <laughs> yeah. But no, gnomes are a separate thing, Greg. That, I, I know. don't. It's I... got its own origin story. Okay. All right. right? I'm right. I would assume. I'm lumping them all together. I don't know. I feel like maybe just different parts of the world are all kind of similar. It's like if I were to just take every bald white guy with an old tiny <laughs> mustache and I said, they're all Greg's, you know, uh, you just probably, reference them all in the same. Oh, they're all podcasters. We're, we're a dive a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, so you know, maybe, you know what we've, we've never mentioned, which is mind boggling is uh, there is no female leprechaun. So how does a leprechaun get made? Wow. Where do um, they come from? Maybe that's why they're extinct. Maybe that's what happened. There was only five of them. Mm-hmm. They were birthed by what? Uh, where did they come from? I did, even if they're extinct now, where did they come from? That's a great question. Um, they evolved from the sea. Maybe that's why they're so no, angry. There's literally no explanation. They're so angry because they're sexually frustrated. But where did they come from? <laughs> hey, well, what came first? No, I trust you. I get the solitary. I get yeah. the frustration. I get the anger. Yeah. Where the hell did they come from? And are they all? Are they all related? Are they all brothers? Is there just one? It's all the same. Is one. there just one? Hmm. Hmm. Is well, he just a freak? It's it's the where did the where you know what came first, the chicken or the egg? This is just unanswerable questions. We gotta Wait, put that in there. Oh, okay. I was gonna say. Is... No, what were we gonna say? I, I was trying to understand that reference in this scenario, but I get it. It's just yeah, none, yeah, who, yeah who you knows? can't answer that. You can't answer it. Uh, they just appeared one day. It's like, uh, you know, Adam and Eve kind of thing. But it was just Adam and Steve, as they like to say sometimes. I was going to say that. <laughs> I was literally going to say that. <laughs> All right. Oh, and one thing that they was never really cleared up either was... I didn't see a ton of, or any mention at all of, at the end of the rainbow is the pot of gold. What's that about? Like, I've it's, always it's, heard- So I, I did read something that alluded to this, mm-hmm. but, it, but I don't know if this is, it, it's, it's an almost impossible place to find. Have mm-hmm. you ever actually seen an end of a rainbow? I saw this uh, clip the other day where it was, the rainbow was a full circle. I guess at some point, like it's in the sky, it's a full circle. It connects. So there's no such thing as the end of a rainbow. So they say that's the biggest trick of all. They say you there's no the 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 pot of gold is at the end of the rainbow, and it puts you on this journey, a, a circular journey with no end. And we finally found out the biggest trick of the leprechauns. Wow. Whoa. I I once made up this quote once, and okay. it, it, it totally re- references is like the uh, the best trick the devil ever played was to make you believe he didn't exist. Yeah. Oh, that I, was I, yours. I, remember I said that to you once? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Dave Lazat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so quote size of Kose as read by Dave Lazat. That's right. That's right. I mean, well. Did you say that's the usual suspects? That's from the movie. He says I, that in the movie. I think that's. I, I want to say that's someone else's quote. Still, it's Voltaire. Okay, <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I actually don't know that. I, it, it sounds very Voltaire. Sounds like a French guy would say that. Uh, we can look that up, and we'll, maybe we'll put that in a story or something because everyone's going to be dying to know. Yeah, who said that? <laughs> who was that? <laughs> if if there was only some way we could find out so easily. No, but I mean, isn't that like perfect? That is such a great trick. They hide it, they or they tell you they hide it at a place that doesn't even really exist. And there you are walking around the rainbow over and over and over for the rest of your life while he's while the the pot of gold obviously is somewhere else. Greg, have you ever looked or thought about looking for the end of a rainbow? 
and I was spending my life doing it. And, and now that we've come to this realization, it's just been in vain. How, I, about- I would, I would put money on this. I would put money on this. I, I won't, but I would, okay. uh, I think everybody at some point in their life has contemplated or maybe even gone a little bit towards an end of a rainbow to see if they can find the end of a rainbow. Might as well check. Right. It's the same I, reason. I feel like it, people just have done it. I just, I, I would put money on it by, by your response to me. You're making me think maybe you've never done it or thought about doing it. No, I just, I'm like, whatever. Even when you were a kid, when I was a kid, I was, everyone used to say, Greg would always say money is the root of all evil. That was my, that was my quote that I made up. I, I remember know. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, money is the root of all evil. And people were like, wow, that's yeah, they were, good. I think that one made it around my school and they were talking about you. <laughs> it's an urban legend. <laughs> so I wanted to, so I'll tell you one thing I did look for though, and still do to this day. I don't know if you're going to know what I'm talking about here. It's in Relief Clover. Well, no, Dave. A four four leaf clover. clover. Yeah. <laughs> Three leaf clovers found it. <laughs> I've never looked for a four leaf clover. Really? Yeah. Oh. I never even thought about it. And then I saw people doing it once when I was at work a few years ago. And I was like, wow, people actually look for those. And I still didn't do it. Yeah. So I've I'm constantly looking for four leaf clovers. And another thing, being from New England, I every time clam chowder. I'm looking for clam. Ch- I'm looking for clam. Chowder. <laughs> Where's all the New clams? England at all? <laughs> Where's all the clams? All we got in freaking potatoes in this thing. <laughs> Which I don't mind. Happy St. Patrick's Day. But what the what I'm always looking for, and this is a left turn, that so, when you're thinking, because we're in the vein of I'm constantly looking for this, and I and I just kind of know I'm never going to find one, and it bums me out. But yet the possibility is real enough that I still do it. Arrowheads. Hmm. That wouldn't be so awesome to find an arrowhead. I never looked for one either. Never thought <laughs> yeah. about it. Never thought about it. Always thinking about those rainbows. So you'll know if I ever find one because I'll be wearing it as a necklace. You pick up. Yep, he found one. But I don't think it's going to happen. Greg, you're Irish. Uh, I'm a little. Yeah, I've, I'm not a hundred percent, but yeah, I, I've got some. I know you thought I was, but I am not. Even though our, both of us look translucent, almost translucent, um, like newborn fish. And you've got a beard. Is your hair kind of reddish? No, it's not reddish. You okay. take that back. Okay. Why is that? Is that a You're slur? I curse. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, I have a soul. What are you talking? Okay. About? Yes. Not a ginger. Okay. That's fine. But I think that red hair, red hair people are cool. I do too. I think that they have. I mean, they may not have souls, but they got a lot of like spirit. You know, they may not have souls, but they have a lot of freckles. <laughs> No, it's funny. I wonder where that came from. Like people making like just ridiculous like burns about yeah. people with red hair. It's like when did that start and why? Why exactly was that a thing? That's, I don't. It would be interesting sure. to fire to hell. Everything's all the devil. It's always co- yeah. connected. You know. I knew I knew a guy with red hair, and we used to call him every nickname you could, and he took it really well. Mm, so okay. that that led me to think that people with red hair are really like generous and kind. Yeah. You're lucky he didn't beat you with his shillelagh because he probably has one. Who, flamethrower? Nah, he was cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I want to I want to ask you, do you have any uh St. Patrick's Day traditions that you like to celebrate or honor? Well, one time I made corned beef and cabbage and it was awful way to throw the whole thing out. Oh, I, I love do- making corned beef and cabbage. I, mine actually comes out really good. Well, maybe you can stop by the Chapeteer residence and, and make a couple of sandies for us. That would be really, really nice because as far, oh, so as far, I'd never had a St. Patty's Day tradition, but now that my second youngest son was born on March 17th and we named him Mick for, for that very reason, we do go pretty hard on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. For you know, because it's once you can tie like a birthday into something, unless it's Christmas, you don't want the same birthday as Christmas. But I mean, that's that's big shoes to fill with at Jesus' birthday, right? Sure. So, so you gotta, um, yeah, it's it it's pretty fun around our house for that. We don't really do anything to St. Patrick's Day, but I will try to definitely find a a corn or Reuben at the very least. I'll All have right. a Reuben. What about okay. you? I think I mentioned this when we did our St. Pat, um, not. Our Christmas episode, 
I love traditions, like holiday traditions. I don't care if it's if it's from my culture or not. Mm-hmm. I just love observing things like that. So corned beef is a must. I always get the Irish soda bread. Ooh. I've made it a point to go to the grocery stores and I go to like a bunch of different ones. Now pick up any kind of Irish food around that time. So I, this is one that I, I know it's a little controversial, but bangers, oh, like the that. sausage, bangers but they're actually mash. bangers are English though. Mm. But they get labeled a lot as Irish and, you know, Trader Joe's makes them and I got a, another brand today and I'm, I'm all excited about it. But I started to make in the last few years a traditional Irish breakfast that I eat every year on top of the corned beef. And that's Just a bowl of potatoes. No, it's it's bangers. It's beans. Um, it's Irish bacon. Tomato, like grilled tomato slices. And I can't remember if there's anything else. I love it. It's it's great. It's I Irish feel like bacon's I'm, Irish bacon's just a potato cut in half. Irish bacon is like Canadian bacon. Oh, okay. Which is not ham. actually bacon to us. Yeah, it's yeah. ham. Yeah. Uh, and then so I do that. I usually will pick up some Irish beer, and I spend most of the week watching Irish horror films. I will have a beer or a few, and that's the tradition I. Yeah, you know, partake in most of the time. Um, my traditional Irish breakfast, we always have Lucky Charms. It's a big hit in this house. That's about as close as we're going to get. But the maybe had, one day I'll get you to embrace this lifestyle. Greg. Yeah, I do. Lo- I do love as well. I love traditions, but I just don't. I've been bad with observing them. Although, although we did really well in Christmas and, and like, you know, people who know know that we got together this christmas and it's it's nice i think that you know traditions bring people together and it's mm-hmm. kind of like meaning there's some purpose and is there anytime you can find a reason to just smile and have a good time and, and, and do something outside of the norm it's a good thing just lean into it all enjoy it all love everything i think and i feel anytime you can make an excuse for eating delicious foods yeah do it do it just and, ex- and try foods from other cultures because why not? They're there. Yeah. I can't wait. What's the next big holiday? And then we'll, we'll Easter, Easter is after that. Oh, we're not observe. Okay. So Easter. Eh. Ham? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll ham. A little ham treat. Yeah. Ham treat. And then after Easter, I'm trying to think of the next like delicious holiday. Uh, <laughs> then we get like 4th of July, right? Hey, listen. That's it. Hot dogs? <laughs> I mean, come on. That's the that's the American that's the American food. That's an American holiday. Beautiful hot dogs, hamburgers, um, yeah, fireworks. That sounds yeah. good. All yeah. right, but listen, Dave. There was more. Well, I want to say that there was more here than we thought, but we stretched this pretty good. I'll say. Yeah, I don't think there was. <laughs> I don't think there was more here than we thought at all. But I mean, just to you know, like tie it back one more time. Tie it back. I think that the idea of leprechauns stems from this idea of being careful in not putting too much of your faith or your of your time into the easy way and banking on this thing that's going to like you know solve all your problems and i think it's about just kind of sticking with the idea of being hard working and earning your keep mm-hmm. earning your earning your wealth versus trying to cheat for your wealth don't try to covet another person's wealth, right? Ultimately, leprechauns have coveted wealth and look at what look how they turned out, right? Do you want to turn out to be two feet tall, wearing all green? And being alone all the time? And having terrible shoes that need to get repaired all the time? They're a bunch of Ebenezer Scrooges. Yeah. You, ha- you hang on to that money too tight and you end up you know, alone with your money. Yeah. You know? The, and the- and I, I think you have to be careful too of people who make really big promises Mm -hmm. and because like you can be easily duped. Right. That's a good one. I think Craigslist is a great uh, example of this. Right. Have you ever searched for an apartment on Craigslist? No, not recently. It is a nightmare. (laughs) Scams are crazy. If you're not familiar with Craigslist, you can easily get scammed. You have to have caution. Mm. You know what I should do? I should make a safe website called Craigslist. Greg's list. Yeah, but uh, then, 
somebody would end up going on there and figuring out a way to scam people because everyone would go on there being all trusting. Oh, Greg's a good guy. He's a good guy. <laughs> yeah. I, I trust this site. Yeah. Everyone trusts Greg. He likes hot dogs, hamburgers, American <laughs> foods. That's right. That's Greg's list. That's <laughs> my motto. All right. I think we've made it. And this was actually kind of fun. And Dave, maybe you could post a picture of this fancy um, Irish dinner that you brag about. So my Irish lately. dinner and my Irish breakfast? All of it. All of it. I'll post mine. And we'll see. We'll see which one's more appealing. And once again, please, if you enjoy it, rate and review. Right, Dave? Sure. Please. Please. I mean, that would be sweet. It swell. would be great. Yeah, that'd be, be nice. Swell. Oh, we would appreciate it. And until next time. All okay. right, everybody. Yeah. Sign, In- sign us off. Yeah. You know, you do it so right. well. So everybody have a safe, happy, and fun St. Patrick's Day. Look for leprechauns, even though we've basically told you not to. Mm. And make those three wishes, but make them the most careful damn wishes you've ever made. Mm-hmm. Be very specific. There's a lot of loopholes, and it's not just talking about shoemaking because you know all the loopholes right they should be like little lawyers um the next incarnation of leprechauns isn't going to be a green suit they're going to be little pinstripe suits they're going to be little lawyers because that's okay wrap it up I, got, I was trying to say <laughs> bye wrap it up <laughs> alright everybody have a great night we'll see you next week right. bye bye